Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Monday Night Football on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. With that, let's get up to Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. For the call, we bring in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at Paul Brown Stadium here in Cincinnati, Ohio. The enthusiasm of this Cincinnati crowd in full effect a moment ago as their Bengals took the field to the delight of the sold-out crowd. And they're all set as they'll match up with the Baltimore Ravens. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that can have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. So here come the Ravens with their first look on offense. The man calling the shots in the huddle in his 11th season now, the MVP of Super Bowl 47, and that's Joe Flacco. Throughout his career, he's been tough, hard-nosed, and certainly durable. Only six starts missed in his first 10 seasons and played 16 games nine times. But for the first time in his career, a little competition headed his way with first-round pick Lamar Jackson from Louisville set to contest for the number one job. from a season ago. It's Alex Collins. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Second down, Flacco to throw. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there of 20 yards. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Here's a first down run with Collins. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. on the pickup, and that is going to set up a third and one. And here now, the Baltimore offense. Out of the backfield is Alex Collins, who was claimed by the Baltimore Ravens from Seattle just prior to the season in 2017. And he took over as a lead back right around the start of October, finishing with 973 yards and giving Baltimore their identity again on offense. A run-first team that's physical. This is third and one. Very likely four-down territory, even if they don't get it, though. They'll try to run for it with Collins. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold them to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working.
Now a play fake here on first down. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on his first drive. Instead, second down. The defensive starters now for Cincinnati. Coming off of nine sacks in the sixth Pro Bowl is Geno Atkins, who's an absolute force inside. Not only does he have the ability to wreck a running game because he's able to take out not just one, but often two blockers, his inside presence and ability to rush the passer makes things very difficult for opposing offenses. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's carry number one for Kenneth Dixon. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. The linebacker, Preston Brown, brings him down. Well, they had that one snipped out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. This will be spotted at the 37, so it's a 47-yard attempt. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. A lot of energy in this building tonight, but the opening drive produces three. Maybe quiets them just a bit, at least momentarily. Just a little, right? That's all you're asking for, right? Things just getting started. You know they haven't taken the momentum totally here. But at the same time, they like what they've done here in the early going. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. Here come the Bengals now to take over. Calling the shots in the huddle will be the eighth-year man from TCU. His first season in his 30s. The quarterback is Andy Dalton. Two straight subpar years for the Bengals. 6-9-1 in 2016, followed by a 7-9 in 2017. Many are starting to wonder whether Andy Dalton's actually on the hot seat this year. It's unfortunate. It comes with the territory when you're a starting quarterback in the NFL, even if it's not always fair. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, in on the stop. Here now the offense for the Bengals. Out wide, they have A.J. Green, who can run every route you want on the route tree and take the top off the defense with his speed and has the length to go over the top of people to catch the ball. But maybe the most impressive thing about him, the only wide receiver ever to be a pro bowler in his first seven years in the NFL. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. And here are the Raven defensive starters. The number one asset for a pass rusher, his legs. And even in his mid-30s, Terrell Suggs has his firmly underneath him. Last season, 11 sacks. It's seventh year of double-digit sacks. Still has all the pass rush moves in his arsenal and can continue to bull rush people in order to get quarterbacks on the ground. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Three down, three down. Lee! Lee! 
Dalton here from the gun. Got a man, it's Ross complete. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. When you give up points on the opening drive, in this case a field goal, you'd hate to go three and out. They avoid that. They do, and it's also walking that fine line mentally, too, as a coach, isn't it? Because you want to emphasize to your team exactly what you said. All right, we gave up a field goal. Let's go back and at least equal that, guys. But if we don't, you don't want them to feel like it's the end of the world, either. Nice that they were able to pick up the first down there, help them relax a little bit. here on first down and some room to run now and he'll get it down to the 47 here it's an eight yard pickup and it'll make it second down the option going left on second down and he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line they'll lose a yard and it brings up third i don't think there's any doubt that if it's me i'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know defenders if they get a free shot at the qb they want to take it and they want to take it big and they got it there on the option play for a loss carry for the second year man Joe Mixon and he's taken down at the 43 but now before picking up the first five yards is the pickup there as that extends his drive on third down that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there Play fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. That was hit, and Dalton lost the football. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. Holding offense. So they will take the, the second instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all. Do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? No. No, not at all. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. Lee! Lee! Dalton up play action. He's going to sling this deep down. And yeah, this is taken out. Cody Cole, 38 yards. And the Bengals are going to take the first quarter lead. And that time he came out of the slot for that 
big play downfield for the score. I think what we just saw there, partner, is what we call scheming a guy open. Put him in the slot, know that he has tremendous speed. What you're doing with your other receivers is likely running shorter routes to draw the attention closer to the line of scrimmage to give him a chance to get downfield and turn it into a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. And now the Ravens get him. But he doesn't get far. They're able to stop him. And after all that, the extra point attempt unsuccessful. Well, there's a blocked extra point. I remember playing, and we had one of those go against us. I remember our kicker and our holder told the head coach, just relax, coach. Why are you yelling? Don't worry, but it's just one point. Oh, my. Those coaches see a point is gold to them because you never know how it's going to turn out later. Exactly. That's why I was just going to say first quarter, we'll see if this has any implications as the game goes on. I still can't believe they told the head coach to relax. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Bad move. Bullock out now to kick this one away. Here comes Grant on the return. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here comes the Raven offense now ready for another possession. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 26. The drive starts with a run by Collins. And they'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. I also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Second down, it's Dixon. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Give him three on the play, and just like that, it's third down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Looking for two yards here on third down. Flacco. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Now a give to Collins. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. They run with Collins, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped to the backfield. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. The Ravens on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Flacco. 
Flacco from the gun. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Looking for Sneed, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. There, D gets the INT. Now what can Dalton do? He finds Ross right side. It's complete. And he gets this one up just shy of the 35 to the 34. That one goes for 24 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. and 10. He's going to have the hook up to Ross. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Dalton with a give here to Nixon. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. Holding offense. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with the football to begin quarter number two. But they face a second and long to start things out. of see ball, get ball. Couple of plays sent them the wrong way and now they face a third and 14. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. Caught Eifert over the middle. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. 
So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now here come the Ravens. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 18. They'll begin the drive with Collins. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play. Go ahead into no gain. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense, but a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long. He's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space Ball for start, his runner. Offense. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. So that'll back him up fine. Still first down. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. Carey gets it back to second and 11. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks, allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. A break from the ground game here. Flacco, and that'll be incomplete. Darquez Denard there defensively. The goal of anyone running a curl route is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes, even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. The Ravens on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 11. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to put it away. Alex Erickson deep for Cincinnati. They'll look to shut up his blockers. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. So 
So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 at their own 23. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. Underneath, this is Bernard. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Loss of three on that first down pass play. Now second and 13. They'll run it now out of the gun. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Now the Bengals on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and nine. Single, single. Eight, eight. <laughs> From the gun, Dalton. Going up top. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Carr. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. You're looking there, the defensive back is maybe a step slower than he was when he came into the league a decade ago. I know I question his speed coming into the game, but what he's lost in speed, he's more than made up for it with intellect. And that's a great job of knowing how to position himself to make that interception. Joe Flacco and company heading back out onto the field. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing, he's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 right at the 30. Operating off play action. Flacco. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Flacco fakes the give, sets the throw, and he gets this one to Michael Crabtree. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First catch of the game for Crabtree. It's a first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, up. he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. down Flacco and it's a short one here complete to the tight end and he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48 a gain of six there on first that's a staple of this offense drag route to the tight end yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch but still an effective gain nonetheless six yards was the pickup on the last completion so here's second and four They'll run it now, out of the gun. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Ravens on third down, two for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Ah, 
Here's Flacco. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. The beauty of being able to play his own defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Here's Sam Cook now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Giovanni Bernard getting ready to go again. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going, but we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series so those surface tablets come into play. <laughs> Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Second down, here's Mixon. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. Tackle made there by Tony Jefferson. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action hit them over the top. Now the Bengals on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Operating from the gun, Dalton. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. Terrell Suggs in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he's able to get it out quickly, and this is not a bad kick here. Michael Crabtree and company now heading back onto the field. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four <laughs> verts. One of the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. Now Collins. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. third down 
They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and five. Play action, Flacco. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. And he's had his chances in this game. He just hasn't been able to find any daylight so far. Patience, patience, patience. And that's the hard part for a runner because they expect every run to be a big one for something to pop. So they have to sometimes go through the struggles before it happens for them later in the game. But again, I give credit to the rest of the team. They've worked around the fact that he hasn't had his normal big game. Yeah, despite his struggle, still winning here in the second quarter. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 at their own 23. From the gun, Dalton. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. So we have now seen connection number one between Dalton and Adriel Jeremiah, A.J. Green. Say that again. Adriel Jeremiah. Look at you. You are full of knowledge <laughs> and information. And you know something? I bet Andy Dalton learned his full name as well because he figured out quickly, this is going to be my number one target. I got to know this guy in a big way. here with Dalton. That was hit, and Dalton lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Play fake. Here's Dalton. And that's incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down. Then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back. But it's a big play. They've got to hold up. And the Bengals on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and forever. Operating from the gun, Dalton, and the catch good, it's Eifert. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Cincinnati after this. Fans, a reminder, I have a note card here that says ad-lib halftime previews. So I guess let's do just that as we'll hand things over to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando when this one reaches halftime. They do okay? You did great. Not a bad job. Hey. But, you know, writing down your ad -libs. If you print it, I'm going to read it. <laughs> I'm Brandon Gauden. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Time to discuss Michael Crabtree. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game. Yeah. 
Throwing here on first down. Flacco looking left sideline incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. And that'll bring up second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. From the gun, Flacco over the middle here to Brown. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Flacco to throw here on third down. Now he'll escape to his right. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. They look to throw on first and ten with Flacco. It's caught left side by John Brown. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Flacco now just 6 of 15 through the air. Not good, but first and 10 here. Operating out of the gun. Flacco, quick slam, caught by Moore. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. First and ten here for Flacco. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Vincent Way coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Flacco, incomplete. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Third and long for Joe Flacco. And this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. And that'll bring up fourth down as his Cincy defense stands up on third. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body 
is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And that will knock things up here late in the first half. Now, maybe a nice psychological boost there just to get back to even with that field goal as we head towards half. Coaching 101 always says at halftime, play it like it's 0-0 on the scoreboard. Well, in this case, it's level, right? Same score each side. Just start over. Now you get the second half to play. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Mixon gets the nod to start the drive. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. All even through one half of football as we get back underway in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. The drive starts with a handoff to Bernard, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, that play was unsuccessful to start the second half. I'm not sure that you just totally abandon what you do running the football. Maybe you make some adjustments in your run game and do things a little bit differently, but that doesn't necessarily mean you just go to the pass and do nothing else. Second down, Dalton got his man, it's Eifert. And he'll get 
to the 29-yard line brought down there. The reception good for seven. It's third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Now the Bengals on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and six. Throwing, Dalton. He's got his man, boy. First time they've looked his way in this game, he comes through picking up the first. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Mixon with a first down carry. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, Brandon, so much for halftime adjustments. They still can't get anything going on the ground. It may be time to loosen things up and start flinging it around a little bit. Once again, they run with Mixon. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. The run hasn't worked the last couple of plays. Now it's third and 14. And Dalton to throw. On the screen, Bernard. Nifty footwork at the 45. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Here's Kevin Huber now. He's been terrific so far. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Now it's Flacco. He's going to lock one deep left side here. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Michael Crabtree, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball. And we see yet another errant throw as a result. Complete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Vincent Ray, the linebacker, in on the tackle. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. You know, Four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going into the quarterback in an expected passing situation. The Ravens on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and nine. Flacco off play action. Looking deep for Crabtree. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. 
fourth down now. But it's not been the best game for him. But he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete. But you're right, hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start here with a give to Mixon. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Throwing on second down. He completes it to Bowie. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. here on first down he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete we saw this a lot in the first half and it continues these receivers just not able to get much separation so that means they have to win the 50 50 balls they've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them and this time contact and another incomplete pass after the incomplete pass here now is second and ten it's Mixon on the counter. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. And for has it. And he will have a first down as they get into the ground at the 37. Dalton to his big target, Eifert, for the Cincinnati first. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Andy Dalton now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Andy Dalton. Boys the target, and he has it over the middle. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. That one goes for 24 yards. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. And Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, got stronger. But the best part about him is he's always been accurate. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. 
They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, usually you don't think of the cornerback coming in for a no-gain play, but that's what we had there. Nice tackle. Yeah, and how about the range, too? Coming from the outside part of the play, moving his way into the inside and making that play happen. No gain for the offense. Big play for the defense. Dalton gives to Bernard, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. To say they've kept him under wraps running the football, that, that's an understatement. He's been completely neutralized. Yeah, they've essentially taken him out of the game, haven't they? And you know all the teams say, we're not going to let him beat us. You know, that's exactly what's happened here. They've lived up to that. Now the Bengals on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is going to be third and 13. Dalton here from the gun. Complete to the right side. It's Eifert. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. They get 7 there, but it brings up 4th. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Here's Randy Bullock now as he'll go for the field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Bullock will put this one through. And they take the lead here as it's now 9-6. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made him kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. The return man is Graham. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start the drive with Dixon. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They pitch it out to Collins. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Any team that runs the toss and runs it successfully, that means they win the battle on the edges. That means you seal the edge in order to let your back get to the corner. They got it done there for a very nice game.
first, they go right back to Collins. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. They'll run it now out of the gun. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Dixon again. Room to run inside the 40. And a cutback right sideline. A big play on the ground there. It goes for 36 yards. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that, that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. And they'll go on the ground. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through and picking up first downs. First and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Ah, ah. Trying to pound it in with Dixon. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. From back at the four, here's second and goal. A break from the ground game here. Flacco. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Nick Boyle from four yards out. And the Ravens have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet 
or they just executed better? Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Justin Tucker for the extra point. Tucker with the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now. First and 10 at their 25-yard line. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again. Dalton is incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the former Pitt Panther, was the target. And that'll make it third down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was a type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. A really good pickup of 28 yards. So they did not bring pressure, and it turns out probably a bad idea. Yeah, he had time to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike. So I'm wondering if they're going to note that, and next time just go ahead and bring that pressure. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. This will be Dalton again. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Pass interference, defense. Well, you won't hear any boos from this home crowd down. on that call. No, not at all. And it's been a long day for this crowd. Waiting for this game. It's been a long evening as well. Finally, they feel they got a call. First and ten, here's Andy Dalton. And he comes back 
with one complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Seven yards on the play, and it'll make it a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And down inside the 15 he goes. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. Dalton on the draw to mix it. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. It's second down. Don't look it. And he can't corral it. Maybe a big missed opportunity there defensively in the end zone. And now third down. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. And the Bengals on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and five. Lee, uh -huh, Lee. Now whistles and a flag. And I believe a Bengal got going a little early there. False start. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course. And that moves them back five. Still third down. And this offense back to needing 10 yards after the false start. Third and 10. Out of the gun. It's Dalton. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Tavon Young. And he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage with a penalty flag down. This might push him back further. Holding. Defense. Wait a second, they did that not accept decline. that after the incompletion. <laughs> I, I, you, your, your look is just as puzzled as mine. <laughs> I got nothing for you here. You have to take that penalty, don't you? It's free yards. So the special teams penalty costs some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. Give left side to Collins. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is, don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It appears he'll be a few inches short, so nine yards on the gain officially, and it'll be third down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. The offense on third down tonight, they're hitting at just 30%, 3 for 10. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll try and run for it with Collins. 
So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Michael Crabtree there. And that takes us from second to third down. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Play action. Flacco. And he's got Snead. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Every guy that plays this game has plenty of people around him that are concerned for his health and well-being. He had no regard for his body on that catch <laughs> at all, did he? Middle of the field diving to grab it? No, he didn't. Racco now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Pulled over a few people. Look at that one. Right up the gut. So up through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. <laughs> and the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. Delay of game, offense. And that'll set them back five. Still second down. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game, second and eight. Four down, four down. Check. Check. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. A decent run there following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. play Flacco and this is going to be incomplete 
Sorry, they looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. incomplete. John Ross the one he was looking for. And it's second down. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw again, Dalton, and his pass incomplete. I think someone's going to get in the QB one here when he gets to the sideline. Already thrown an interception. That one should have been picked. Look, let's just be honest about it. That'd be the second person in his ear because he's hearing it in the huddle right now. Not the start to the game he wanted. Like you said, the pick on the opening drive, second drive, not much better. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. <laughs> From the gun, Dalton. And the Lincoln pressure too much. Down he goes. Terrell Suggs in there to get him for his second sack of the night. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Kevin Huber now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. That's taken it around the 40. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Ravens set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer. Create space for our runners. And let's go ahead and give these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Here's a first down run with Collins. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Again, it's Collins, and he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. And incomplete. The contact made the ball run free and brings up fourth down. You 
can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. From midfield here, Dalton. And he finds him there with a crossing route. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Holding offense. Well, your QB's been sacked four times in the game already, and they're the holding goal. And you know darn well the offensive line coach is frustrated and upset that he's been hit that many times already. He doesn't really care that they hold now. Just don't let him get hit anymore. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Operating from the go, Dalton. He gets this one to Boyd. It's a solid pickup of 11 and it's second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. To throw on second down. Dalton Green with a catch left side. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that's going to bring up the fourth down. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have. And what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak. Not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. Down four late, got to go for it here on fourth down. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen 
Hey, third down situation. Big third down alert. Lock in here. Fourth down play. Make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Starts with a run by Collins. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Whistles now at a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. Second down, Collins, and he's got room. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. Flack on the throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. Andy Dalton marching back onto the field. A field goal does him no good. They need a touchdown. And right now, in his mind, in his memory bank, he's drawing on times that he's done this before. Not necessarily in the NFL. College, high school, peewee ball, wherever. <laughs> Anything positive that he remembers about taking a team downfield with a chance to win, he's going to draw on that for this drive. I'm sure that these guys live for these moments. Here we go. They'll look to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Boyd. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Hey, 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 
Dalton with a give here to Mixon. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Again, it's Mixon. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Got to be careful here. They need to move quickly, but it's also fourth. Back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Ravens are looking like they're going to come away with a victory. So now let's look at this situation with no timeouts remaining. The offense should be able to just run the clock out. I know that's what it says on my time management chart up here. And I know a lot of teams are hiring a time management coach who's going to sit in the box, talk to the head coach. And in this situation, if you do anything but take a knee in victory formation, then you're not playing the game right. This game should be over. Take the knee, hold on to the ball. By the way, so impressive that you do have a time management chart up here. Listen, you know I can't count. So <laughs> I need it in a big way. We can't hire anyone to help us out. So hopefully I'm reading it correctly. The Ravens taking a knee with victory seemingly in hand here. To an egos Flacco, and that should be it. I don't know about you, partner, but watching him take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair, low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Cincinnati, good night, everybody.